Hey there, whiskey lovers. Welcome to another Whiskey with Isla, and today we have a special Canada Day edition. So how do we like my Canadian tuxedo? Yeah, we're rocking the double den denim. <laughs> so because it's Canada Day, I thought I would do something a little different. Uh, you know, I usually am a scotch drinker, uh, as you've probably seen from my whiskey shelf, but today we are doing all Canadian whiskey which I have to say is uh, a little unusual for me because I'm, I'm honestly generally not the biggest fan, but you know what, I think there are some amazing gems out there that are absolutely worth talking about. So we're gonna go through a couple today that are regularly featured in my house. We're gonna start with one that I think a bunch of you are probably gonna be familiar with, and that is the Crown Royal Northern Harvest Rye. Now I'm sure a bunch of you as I do, have some memories of Crown from high school or college that bring to mind, you know, that drink that you wake up the next morning regretting, but that is just your standard Crown. Crown Royal Northern Harvest Rye was actually voted World Whiskey of the Year uh, 2016, and also it's been voted Canadian Whiskey of the Year for 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2020. It was briefly overtaken by Chronicles uh, last year. So it's, it's a quality dram, and the exciting thing about it is that it's a high rye, so it has a very high rye content. Most Canadian whiskey, most Canadian rye, is not entirely made of rye. It's usually got corn or some other grain in there, which is kind of my big beef with Canadian whiskey as, uh, as a spectrum. You know, I'm just, I'm not a fan of corn whiskey. That's just my personal preference. I know there are some amazing corn whiskeys out there, Shout out to my uh, mellow corn fans. Um, it's just not for me. So when I found a, a, a Crown Royal that uh, had a, a high rye content, I was pretty excited because I actually do occasionally enjoy a rye whiskey. I like that it's spicy. I like that they make fabulous cocktails. So as you can see, this bottle, well, not a whole lot left in it. And that's because this is my go-to whenever I want a crisp whiskey cocktail. This is what I reach for. It will make you an incredible uh, rye and ginger. It's fabulous stuff. But we're gonna have a little taste neat today to kick things off for Canada Day. And right off the bat, I get a nose full of pear, which is super cool. You also get a little bit of that baking spices, smooth vanilla. It's just, it's a whiskey where, you know, the nose is really inviting, again, when I think about Canadian whiskey, I don't always think about an amazing nose, but this, this crown will surprise you. Let's have a little taste, shall we? Mm, very smooth, creamy. Again, lots of those apple pear notes, which is why it, it works so well for cocktails because it brings sort of this fresh, juicy spice to your cocktail. And right there on the back, I'm feeling my mouth just just filling with those warm sort of baking spices and that and that you know rye bread character that that is what gets me really excited about this whiskey. And we've got a lot of whiskey to go through today, so I'm not going to be going as in depth as I usually do. We're going to be ripping through uh, because I want to show you all of my favorites, though. So Crown Royal Northern Har Harvest Rye, my go-to for rye cocktails, and really worth picking up a bottle if you can track it down. Next up. We've got something, again, kind of exciting. We have the Gooderham and Warts 49 Wellington. Now, Gooderham and Warts is actually the distillery that is the reason why Toronto's fabulous distillery district exists. That was originally all the Gooderham and Warts distillery. It was uh, the largest distillery in the world at one point, mainly because Toronto had a cholera problem, so people drank a lot of whiskey because the water wasn't safe. Uh, you can learn all about that on amazing tours of the district. Unfortunately, Good Arm and Warts is no longer made there. It's made in Windsor now, um, and it's no longer uh, just Good Arm and Warts. I believe it's Hiram Walker that owns them. Uh, they're not one, again, that I would usually think of when I think of whiskeys I want to reach for, but this one is super cool because it is a red winter wheat whiskey and it's 19 years old which for a canadian whiskey again things that you're not usually thinking of you're usually thinking of you know no age statements and you know a corn or rye based whiskey this is 
uh, a blend of four grains, corn, barley, uh, rye, and this red winter wheat, and that really gives it a very interesting character and bite. So I've got some other good Urim and Warts bottles that I've picked up that I don't find myself reaching for very often, but this one is definitely a little more interesting. That age really helps with this, uh, with this guy. And uh, yeah, that red winter wheat adds this really cool bite. So let's give it a, a nose, shall we? Mmm. And you can really like right off the bat. So you've got you've got that little bit of alcohol burn still on the nose, but right off the off the bat, there's something spicy. There's something aggressive, but not in a bad way. I'm not mad at it. It's got it's it's a very mild nose compared to the Crown Royal Northern Harvest Rye. It's 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 a whisper of a nose, but let's. Let's give it a taste and, and see what's hiding in here. Ooh, wow. That's a great whiskey. I would drink this neat quite happily. Um, it sort of unwinds in your mouth into this really, really forward whiskey. You know, it's got that, it's got that assertiveness that I usually look for in a really nice scotch. Um, it's not cloyingly sweet, which is great. It's doing all kinds of interesting things on my palate right now. There's almost, there's a sour quality to it, but not in a bad way. It's more like, it, it's more like a bready sourness that's, that's really exciting. Um, lots of spice, lots of interesting flavors, some caramel rolling around in there. Just a, a really fascinating whiskey and such a stark difference between this and the Northern Harvest Rye. Now this one is going to be really difficult to track down if you'd like to try it for yourselves. I'm very sorry about that in advance. Um, God, where did I pick this up? Um, oh God, I think I think this was the, the SAQ in Quebec. I don't know if it's any if there's any available in Ontario anymore or if it is, it's going to be tricky to find. But it's definitely, if you are into quirky whiskeys, something that's worth trying. Mm, so curious, but moving on. So we talked about how Gooderham and Warts is uh, the original distillery for the distillery district in Toronto. It's since moved on, but good news, there is distilling happening again in the distillery district. And that is with our next whiskey, Spirit of York. So I've been watching Spirit of York dist uh, distillery, first starting with some amazing vodkas and gin and this fabulous Aquavit. And if you've never tried Aquavit, get on the Aquavit train. It's, it is one of the more versatile spirits you'll ever come across. And a summer cocktail with Aquavit is mm, gorgeous. Very recently, they were able to start producing whiskey. And the reason why it took them a while is because in order for a product to be called whiskey, it needs to be aged. In Canada, that's for a minimum of three years. So they've only been open, oh gosh, a few years now. So just last year they started producing this. And the exciting thing about this guy here, besides the truly beautiful bottle, check that sucker out, is that it is a 100% rye whiskey, which is really rare. As I mentioned, Canadian whiskeys often, more often than not really, are a blend of a few different grains. This one is a 100% rye whiskey, which means it is 100% made from a grain that I actually enjoy drinking. So we're gonna give this one a taste. And when I first tried this, I went to their beautiful, beautiful location. They have this amazing bar, it's filled with plants and this beautiful old building in the distillery. Um, you know, I found it a little young, but again, it's new whiskey. I've since gone back and tried their next batch as well as their cask strength. And I think there's something really amazing happening there. And I can't wait to see what happens to this whiskey with a few years under its belt. I think it's gonna do something amazing. Let's give this a nose. Ooh, and it's like, it's like standing in a kitchen when someone's baking rye bread. You've got warm, roasty, bready aromas. There's some sweetness in there, but again, this is a rye. This is pure rye, 100%. So you're not getting that sticky backbone that corn that a corn whiskey can kind of bring which is in my opinion a good thing i'm gonna give this and we're gonna give this a little taste mm. 
This is a whiskey that comes out the gate hot. Your whole mouth is just alive with sensations. So I would say this whiskey is one where, you know, it might like a drop of water or two to bring it to your preference. I'm okay with a high ABV and a lot of, you know, youth and fire. So to me, this is delicious. But if you don't like something that's really gonna have that heat there, you're probably gonna wanna walk this one back. That said, it's absolutely worth it because right now my mouth is nothing but toffee, vanilla, and the spices. Oh my God, the, the baking spices in this, the, the, again, that bready quality that I'm always looking for in a really interesting rye, absolutely fantastic. And it's lingering. This guy is lingering longer than any of the other whiskeys that we've tried. I'm standing here right now talking to you and I'm still tasting that whiskey, which to me is a really fantastic thing. One, because it means I drink my whiskey a little slower, so I go through fewer bottles. <laughs> but also because to me that speaks to, to a depth of character and something that, you know, in the next runs as they're putting out older and older barrels, I mean, this is just really gonna mature into something with, with depth and breadth that I'm so looking forward to tasting. Actually, I might steal another sip because I love rye. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and for a young whiskey, you know what? It's still pretty smooth. Keep in mind, this is three years old, and I mean, it's definitely showing its youth, but it's not nearly as fiery as you might worry about. And my God, I mean, just, just the finish on this. Finish on this is what's most exciting. But moving on to another exciting whiskey. We are moving on to two brewers. Now I was actually supposed to be there. So if you come to Toronto, I can take you to Spirit of York Whiskey, show you all the things that make it amazing. I wish I could take you here. I was supposed to go, but it is uh, North America's northernmost distillery. It's all the way up in Whitehorse in the Yukon, which is super cool. and. That kind of gives them an opportunity to do some things with their whiskey that you only really see in, you know, very northern areas. Like I've seen um, uh, when I was uh, in the Arctic at Svalbard, they, there was a, a brewery there that did uh, iceberg beer. Uh, there's another one in Newfoundland that does iceberg beer and the interesting things with glacial water. And you kind of think it's going to be a gimmick until you taste it and there's this crispness to the beer that you can just tell it's it's a product of, 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 of a very different water source than you know a, a local aquifer. So with two brewers, we've got a glacial water single malt. Yay, barley, ah, oh, no corn, I'm so excited. Uh, and the particularly cool thing about this is that it's peated, which is not really something that you see with Canadian whiskey. Um, so, and I, I'm just gonna show you the bottle there. So it says glacial fed, glacial fed streams there, which is very, very exciting. And they do a lot of really experimental stuff. So I'm, I was really bummed that I couldn't make it up there. Unfortunately, COVID scuttled my travel plans, but uh, it's gonna make it into my glass today and we're gonna taste along with each other. So this is peated and a Canadian single malt. Mm, okay, so right off the bat, little whiff of smoke but nothing crazy it's more it's got this juicy quality to it again it almost it has a it has that pear note to it that i i really enjoy there's a surprising freshness woven in with that little little hint of something smoky yeah it's like it's like if you've ever dipped apples in caramel like that Mm. And now on my tongue, it is just exploding with that fantastic peat flavor. But it's so delicate. There's this really light quality to the spirit. And I'm going to go ahead and shamelessly chalk that up to the really cool glacial, glacial water thing. But in my experience, you know, the water makes a difference. Um, and this has this clean finish to it that, again, unlike any of these guys, which considering you know, it's, it's obviously not an extremely peated whiskey, but it's definitely quite peated. And it's, it's amazing to me that the mouthfeel is as light and delicate as it is, given that I, you know, I am drinking something that's got, you know, that smoky, earthy quality. 
the apples are continuing to go a little not notably shorter on the finish than our Spirit of York, although most things are, quite frankly, Spirit of York is truly remarkable with its long finish. Uh, but with this guy, it's a dangerously easy sipper. It, you can just knock this one down and it's this little puff of apple wood smoke in your mouth and then it's, it's gone and you can take another sip. Dangerous stuff. <laughs> mm. Now, I'm sure you're all thinking, well, I mean, sure, you showed us a bunch of Canadian whiskeys, but there's really own Canadian, only one Canadian whiskey that I think of when I think of Canadian whiskey. And I do happen to have it here because somebody gifted me a truly ridiculous bottle. We have here a big old bottle of Canadian Club. Again, a lot of rough high school memories here. So, uh, you know, I would pour myself a dram of this and give it a sample, but having had all of these beautiful, really interesting Canadian whiskeys, I'm not gonna punish my tongue like that. What I will say is that, you know what? There is nothing wrong with a classic cocktail made of Canadian Club. So I've got that ready over here. We've got our Canadian Club. And for Canada Day, Canada Dry. This is the only way I will drink Canadian Club. You can call me a snob, I don't care. <laughs> that said, sometimes when, when the local LCBO is out of the uh, Crown Royal Northern Harvest and you just really want a whiskey and ginger, I guess all you can do is reach for your massive bottle of Gifted Canadian Club and I'll call it a night. Mm, a taste of mediocrity. <laughs> That's it for our Canadian whiskey today. I really hope that you've enjoyed this. I've tried to get through things as quickly as possible. I know this has been a long video. Uh, I hope wherever you are, you're having a wonderful day and especially if you're Canadian, Happy Canada Day. Thanks for tuning into Whiskey with Isla, and I'll see you next time.